The F-35 is a well-known aircraft that originated from the U.S. Joint Strike Fighter Program and is currently the mainstay fighter of the U.S. military for the next decade. However, in today's episode, let's talk about another fifth-generation aircraft in the U.S. Joint Strike Fighter Program, the X-32. In 1994, the U.S. military sought to develop a lightweight fighter that could be affordable for all branches of the armed forces, merging it with the Joint Advanced Strike technology at the time. This led to the formation of the Joint Strike Fighter Program. Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and later McDonnell Douglas, which merged with Boeing, all showed great interest and involvement in this program. After the initial screening, Martin and Boeing emerged as the two competitors. Boeing's team, leveraging the experience of the Harrier jet, had a significant lead over Lockheed's team. Soon after, the first X-32 prototype made its debut. The X-32 was equipped with the F-119-614 engine, featuring a fan diameter of 1.14 meters and a thrust that could increase up to 222.7 kilonewtons, with an actual thrust in use of 187 kilonewtons. At low speeds or during hover, conventional control surfaces were not effective. To ensure the aircraft's maneuverability and stability, the X-32 incorporated a jet control system with multiple nozzles for pitch, roll, and yaw control. The main nozzle was designed for thrust vectoring with a range of 20 degrees in the vertical plane. Additionally, there were two front lift nozzles on either side of the engine to enable vertical landing and maintain balance. Here's the key point, the jet nozzles required a substantial amount of air for vertical takeoff and landing. Where did this air come from? The X-32 inherited the concept of the Harrier jet's vertical takeoff and landing method, known as the Pegasus engine. The advantage was that it had existing reference experience, which expedited its development. However, it also inherited the drawbacks of the Pegasus engine, namely the need for a large intake to meet the air requirements of the jet nozzles. Nevertheless, the X-32 was the first prototype to be shaped at that time, leading many to believe it could be the next generation of stealth fighter for the U.S. Air Force. However, this aircraft did not satisfy the U.S. military. The reason they provided was straightforward. The X-32's intake resembled the wide-open mouth of a frog, combined with a round and bulging fuselage supported by the intake. When it flew in the sky, it looked like a fully fed and incredibly ugly flying toad. At this point, the U.S. Air Force was eagerly anticipating the appearance of another prototype, the X-35. Soon after, Martin Company met expectations and introduced the X-35 prototype as well. Although the X-35 during that period appeared bulky and even obese, compared to the X-32, its appearance instantly improved, and its size seemed more slender. Boeing, seeing its X-32 falling behind in appearance, quickly emphasized its performance. Objectively speaking, the X-32 had commendable performance, meeting the design requirements for short takeoff and vertical landing capabilities. As the flight speed increased, when the wing's lift exceeded the engine's generated lift, the nozzles gradually rotated backward while the tail nozzle opened, providing dual acceleration for supersonic flight. In addition, Boeing specifically designed an intake system for the X-32 to prevent radar reflection, achieving superior stealth performance for the aircraft. Compared to Martin's X-35, the X-32 indeed possessed a forward-looking superiority. Unfortunately, the U.S. Air Force and many pilots did not agree with this assessment because, regardless of other factors, the X-32's significantly large intake was a significant flaw, visually unappealing, and unhideable. Even if it didn't affect the stealth effect, once it was deployed, it would undoubtedly invite ridicule from counterparts in other countries. In an effort to secure the contract, Boeing decided to make a series of modifications to the X-32. However, after careful consideration, they ultimately chose to abandon it because if the intake remained unchanged, the X-32 would still look unattractive. But if the intake was altered, the entire aircraft's power system would need to be adjusted, including redesigning the vertical takeoff, short takeoff, and landing capabilities, among other factors. 
Friends who enjoy making things by themselves should know that it is more challenging to extensively modify a finished product than to design a completely new one. The same applies to the X32. The amount of work required for modification was more complex than developing a new aircraft, causing the X-32, which initially had the advantage of time, to gradually fall behind after numerous adjustments. In the end, the U.S. military successfully chose the X-35, as they had hoped. The only two prototypes of the X-32 were sent to the U.S. Air Force National Museum. With that, the competition officially came to an end. From today's perspective, it is clear that the X-32's unattractive appearance was not only one of the reasons for its elimination, but also the main factor. After Lockheed's team solved the challenges of the X-35's airframe construction and lift fan transmission system, they achieved nearly perfect performance during the first test, including the transition from vertical takeoff to level flight. The X-32 encountered difficulties with its jet nozzles. The upgraded F-135 engine, used for vertical takeoff and landing, could not avoid ingesting exhaust gases, which easily caused a loss of power for the aircraft. In contrast, the X-35 had a lift fan at the front, generating a cold airstream that formed a wind barrier, blocking the high-temperature gases expelled from the rear. Undoubtedly, this factor was one of the reasons the X-32 was ultimately rejected. The second reason was even more critical. As everyone knows, a delta wing configuration provides stability at higher speeds, but its stability is greatly compromised at low speeds. The X-32's delta wing layout not only lacked maneuverability, but also struggled to meet the low speed performance requirements for carrier takeoff and landing. These two reasons are widely regarded as the key factors that led to the X-32's defeat by the X-35. It is well known that Boeing is the world's largest commercial aircraft manufacturer and also the largest military aircraft manufacturer. Its status in the industry is unparalleled. However, Boeing has faced repeated setbacks in aircraft design, particularly in terms of external appearance. Strictly speaking, Boeing should have learned from the X-32's unconventional appearance and not repeated the same mistake. Let's take a look at this image. I wonder if anyone feels the same way. The appearance of the BV-235 helicopter is strikingly similar to that of a character from an animated series. In the 1970s, to counter the Soviet Union's military strength, the United States initiated a program for advanced attack helicopters. Five companies, including Sikorsky, Bell, Lockheed, Boeing, and Hughes, presented their bid proposals. As we all know, the AH-64 Apache from Hughes Aircraft Company won the contract, while Boeing's BV-235 helicopter was eliminated in the first round. This outcome was somewhat expected. There is limited information available about this helicopter, but it is said to have had superior performance compared to the Apache. However, its unconventional appearance was the primary reason why it didn't pass the selection process. One can't help but wonder what the two pilots flying this helicopter were thinking at the time. With distorted facial features and silly smiles, how would you describe their expressions? Here's a question for you. If you were in charge of the U.S. military, would you choose this helicopter? Setting aside its performance, based solely on its appearance, both the X-32 and this helicopter do not fit the criteria for a next-generation fighter aircraft. Whether it's the intake or the bulging fuselage, it is difficult to associate them with characteristics such as high maneuverability, stealth, and supersonic capabilities. The U.S. military does not allow a single defense contractor to dominate the market. At the time, Lockheed had almost no market share in the civil aviation sector. If they failed to secure the fifth-generation fighter aircraft contract, they would likely lose their competitive edge against Boeing in the aircraft industry. However, Boeing losing this contract did not have a significant impact on them. Therefore, many military enthusiasts believe that Boeing intentionally produced an underwhelming design once again because, compared to the aircraft's propulsion and systems, appearance is the easiest problem to solve. What are your thoughts on this?